Yeah. And you've also said play to win or don't play at all. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what does it take to win? Um, for AI, that means you've got to have the most powerful training compute. And you're, the, the rate of improvement of training compute has to be faster than everyone else, or you will not win. Your, your AI will be worse. Truth is not an easy thing. We no, kind of bake in ideological not. bias in all kinds of directions. But you can aspire to the truth, and yes. you can try to get as close to the truth as possible with minimum error while acknowledging that there will be some error in what you're saying. So um, this is how physics works. You, know, you, don't, you don't say you're absolutely certain about something, but something, but a lot of things are, extremely likely, you know, 99.99999% likely to be true. Yeah. How can that be the best LLM, the best AI system available in the world? How much of it is compute? How much of it is data? How much of it is like post-training? How much of it is the product that you package it up in? All that kind of stuff. Now, even Caitlyn Jenner said, please misgender me, that is insane. But if you've got that kind of thing programmed in, it could you know, the AI could conclude something absolutely insane, like it's better to, in order to avoid any possible misgendering, all humans must die because then that misgendering is no, not possible because there are no humans. The computer center is like, we're walking around inside the brain. Yeah. They will one day build a super intelligent, super, super intelligent system. Do you think, yeah. do you think there's a chance that XAI, you are the one that builds AGI? Um, it's possible. What, what do you define as AGI? I think humans will never <laughs> acknowledge that AGI has been built. Just keep moving the goalposts. Yeah. So uh, I think there's already superhuman capabilities that are available uh, in AI systems. I oh, think yeah. I think what AGI is is when it's smarter than the collective intelligence of the entire human species. In our well, I think that yeah, that normally people would call that sort of ASI, artificial superintelligence. Um, but the, 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 there are these thresholds where um, you say at, at some point, um, the AI is smarter than any single human. Um, and then, then you've got 8 billion humans. So, um, and, and actually each human is machine augmented by the computers. Right. So you've got, so it's, it's a much higher bar to compete with uh, 8 billion machine augmented humans. That's, you know, a whole, whole bunch of orders of magnitude more. So, but, but at, at a certain point, yeah, the AI will be smarter than all humans combined. Yeah. Do you think it's possible to have a, a serious, objective, rigorous political discussion with Grok? Uh, like well, for a long time and it wouldn't, like Grok 3 or Grok 4? Grok 3 so. is going to be next level. I mean, what people are currently seeing with Grok is, is kind of baby Grok. Yeah, baby Grok. <laughs> it's baby Grok right now. Uh, but baby Grok's still pretty good. Um, so it's, uh, but it's an order of magnitude less sophisticated than GPT-4. And, 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 you know, it's now Grok 2, which finished training, I don't know, six weeks ago or there, thereabouts. Um, Grok 2 will be a giant improvement. And then Grok 3 will be, I don't know, order of magnitude better than Grok 2. And you're hoping for it to be like state of the art, like better than? Hopefully, I mean, this is a goal. I mean, we may fail at this goal. That is, that's the aspiration. Do you think it matters who builds the AGI? The, the people and how they think and how they structure their companies and all that kind of stuff? Political, anything. Um, I, I am concerned about AI succeeding that is that that has got that is programmed to lie, even in even in small ways. What do you think it takes to get to mass production of humanoid robots like that? It's the same as cars, really. I mean, global capacity for vehicles um, is about a hundred million a year, and uh, it could, it could be higher. It's just that the demand is on the order of a hundred million a year, and then there's roughly two billion uh, vehicles that are in use in some way. So, uh, which makes sense, like the, the life of a vehicle is about 20 years. So at steady state, you can have 100 million vehicles produced a year with a, with a 2 billion vehicle fleet, roughly. Um, now for humanoid robots, the utility is much greater. That So the, the muscles that control your fingers are in your forearm and they go through your, the carpal tunnel, which is that you've got a little collection of bones and, and a tiny tunnel 
that the that these cables, the tendons go through, and those tendons are what um, mostly what moves your hands. And something like those tendons has to be re engineered into the Optimus in yeah. order to do all that kind of stuff. Um, again, it sounds, these, these all sound, I think, very, very obvious when I say them, but uh, the number of times I've made these mistakes is uh, more than I care to remember. Um, that's why I have this mantra. So, in fact, I'd say the, the most common mistake of smart engineers is to optimize a thing that should not exist. I lie. Because um, essentially the, the, the AI, HAL 9000, was programmed to, it was told to take the astronauts to the monolith, um, but also they could not know about the monolith. So it, it concluded that uh, it will just take, it will kill them <laughs> and take them to the monolith. Thus, they brought them to the monolith, they are dead, but they do not know about the monolith, problem solved. Mm -hmm. That is why it would not open the pod bay doors. Yeah. Um, and there's like a step four as well, which is um, any given thing can be sped up. <laughs> However fast you think it can be done, like whatever the speed the, the speed is being done, it can be done faster. Mm -hmm. But but you shouldn't speed things up until it's off, until you've tried to delete it and optimize it. Otherwise, you're speeding up that something that speeding up something that shouldn't exist is absurd. Um, and then and then the, the the fifth thing is to to automate it. Yeah. And I've gone backwards so many times where I've automated something, <laughs> sped it up, simplified it, and then deleted it. <laughs> and I got tired of doing that. It's that universe again with the yeah, jokes. Exactly, just love it. I mean, I, I wonder if you could speak to the the fact that you one of the things uh, that you did uh, when I was there is you went through all the steps of what everybody's doing just yeah. to get a sense that you yourself understand it and uh, everybody understands it, so they can understand when something is dumb or some something is inefficient or that kind yeah. of stuff. Can you speak to that? Yeah. So I like I, like I try to do. Whatever the, the people at the front lines are doing, I try to do it at least a few times myself. So connecting fiber optic cables, diagnosing a faulty connection, that, that tends to be the limiting factor for large training clusters is the cabling. Uh, yeah, I think it matters that there is a, I, I think it's important that <laughs> that the, whatever AI wins is a maximum truth-seeking AI that is not uh, forced to lie for political correctness. It, it's, well, for any reason, really. In the real-time video coming from the several million cars, ultimately tens of millions of cars with Optimus, there might be hundreds of millions of Optimus robots, maybe billions, learning a tremendous amount from the real world. Uh, that's that's the, the biggest source of data, I think, ultimately, is, is sort of Optimus probably. Is, Optimus is going to be the biggest source of data. Because it's able Because re reality scales. There's so many cables. Um, because it, for, for for a coherent training system where you've got um, RDMA, remote, uh, sort of remote direct memory access, uh, the, ho the whole thing is like one giant brain. So it's, it's, you've got um, any to any connection. So it's the, the any GPU can talk to any GPU out of 100,000. That, that is a crazy cable layout. It looks pretty cool. Yeah. It's like it's like a, the human brain, but like at a scale that humans can visibly see. It is a yeah. brain. I mean, the human brain also has a, a massive amount of the brain tissue is the, the cables. Yeah. So they get the gray matter, which is the compute, and then the white matter, which is cables. A uh, big percentage of your brain is just cables. That's what it felt like walking around. In the... <laughs> um, it's actually humbling to see how little data humans have actually been able to accumulate. Um, really, if you say how many trillions of usable tokens have humans generated where on a non-duplicative, like discounting spam and repetitive stuff, it's not a huge number. You run out pretty quickly. And Optimus can go, so Tesla cars can, are unfortunately have to stay on the road uh, Optimus right. robot can go anywhere. And there's <laughs> yeah. more reality off the road and go yeah, off road. I, I mean, like the Optimus robot can like pick up the cup and see, did it pick up the cup in the right way? Did it, yeah. you know, say you know, pour water in the cup, you know, yeah. did the water go in the cup or not go in the cup? Did it spill water or not? Yeah. Um, simple stuff like that. Uh, on the, if it's twice the horsepower, then probably even a mediocre driver will still win. 
So the training computer is kind of like the engine, how many, this horsepower of the engine. So you really, you want to try to do the best on that. And you then, um, then so how efficiently do you use that training compute? And how efficiently do you do the inference, the uh, use of the AI? Um, issues with ChatGPT and Gemini and whatnot, like you asked Gemini for an image of the founding fathers of the United States, and it shows a group of diverse women. Now that's factually untrue. Mm -hmm. um, so um, now that, that's sort of like a silly thing, uh, but uh, if, if, if an AI is programmed to say like diversity is a necessary out, output function, and it, then it becomes omni, sort of this omni-powerful uh, intelligence, it could say, okay, well, diversity is now required uh, and uh, and if there's not enough diversity, those who don't fit the diversity requirements will be executed. If it's programmed to do that as the fundamental the fundamental utility function, it will do whatever it takes to achieve that. You know, I have this very basic first basic first principles algorithm that I run kind of as like a mantra, which is to first question the requirements, make the requirements um, less dumb. The requirements are always dumb to some degree. So if you want to start off by reducing the number of requirements, um, and um, no matter how smart the person who gave you those requirements, they're still dumb to some degree. Um, if you you have to start there because otherwise uh, you could get the perfect answer to the wrong question. So so try to make the question the least wrong possible. That's what um, questioning the requirements means. And then the second thing is try to delete the whatever the step is, the, the part or the process step. Um, sounds very obvious, but um, people often forget to do to, to try deleting it entirely. And if, if you're not forced to put back at least 10% of what you delete, you're not deleting enough. Like, so, and, uh, and it's uh, somewhat illogically, people often, most of the time, um, feel as though they've succeeded if they have not been forced to put the, put things back in, but actually they haven't because they've been overly conservative and, and have left things in there that shouldn't be. So, and only the third thing is try to optimize it or simplify it. So, I mean, I thought about AI safety for a long time and the, 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 the thing that at least my biological neural net comes up with as being the most important thing is um, adherence to truth. Uh, whether that truth is uh, politically correct or not. Like there's a reason we've got a little finger, like why not have a little finger this bigger? Yeah. Because it allows you to do fine, it, it helps you with fine motor skills. That, this little finger helps? <laughs> it does. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> if you lost your little finger, it would, you, you'd have noticeably less dexterity. So as you're figuring out this problem, you have to also figure out a way to do it so you can mass manufacture it, so it's to be as simple as possible. It's actually going to be quite complicated. I, the, 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 the as possible part is it's quite a high bar. If you want to have a humanoid robot that can um, do things that a human can do, it's actually it's a, it's a very high bar. So our, our new arm has 22 degrees of freedom instead of 11 and has the, like I said, the actuators in the forearm. Um, and these all, all the actuators are designed from scratch, the, from physics first principles, um, that the sensors are all designed from scratch. And, and we'll, we'll continue to put um, a tremendous amount of engineering effort into improving the hand, like the, the, the hand, by, by hand, I mean like the, the, the entire forearm from elbow forward mm -hmm. uh, is, is really the hand. Um, so that's um, incredibly difficult engineering actually. <laughs> and um, and so then, so the simplest possible version of a humanoid robot that can do even most, perhaps not all, of what a human can do is actually still, still very complicated. It's not. It's not simple. It's very difficult. Yeah, and pick up objects. Yeah, yeah. They can already do that. But like all kinds of objects. Yeah, yeah. All foreign objects. I mean, pouring water in a cup is not trivial because then, if you don't know anything about the container, it could be all kinds of containers. Well, when you've already automated, deleting must be real painful. Yeah. See, if we yeah, it's very. It's like. <laughs> It's like wow, I really wasted a lot of effort there. Yeah, uh, I mean, what you've done uh, with the with the cluster in uh, Memphis is incredible. Just in a handful well, of weeks. Yeah, it's not working yet, so I don't want to pop the champagne corks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> in fact, I have, a, I have a, a call in a few hours with the Memphis team. 
um, because we're we're having some power fluctuation issues. Um, (laughs) So, uh, yeah, it's like kind of a there's a when when you do synchronized training, when you you've all these computers that are training uh, that where the training is synchronized to you know the sort of millisecond level, uh, you it's like having an orchestra, you know, and then the, the the orchestra can go loud to silent very quickly, you know, at um, sub-second level. And then the, the the electrical system kind of freaks out about that. Like if you, if you suddenly see giant shifts, 10, 20 megawatts, several times a second, uh, the, this is not, so you have yeah. to actually, you know, like there's a, a thing now, if, if you want to search the internet, you, you can say Google, but uh, exclude it. Anything after twenty twenty three will actually often give you better results. Yeah, um, because there's this so much the, the explosion of, of AI generated material is uh, crazy. Yeah, but going back to sort of where our limbic system can steer us wrong is that um, we tend to remember uh, with a, sometimes a jarring level of pain uh, where we where we deleted something that we subsequently needed. Yeah, um, and so. People will remember that one time they forgot to put in this thing three years ago, and that caused them trouble. Um, and so they overcorrect, and then they put too much stuff in there and overcomplicate things. It's the manipulation of the world, manipulation of objects in the world, intelligent, safe manipulation of objects in the world. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you start really thinking about your hand and how it works. <laughs> you know, I do it all the time. The sensory control homunculus is we are objective.